This is one of these crazy details or context missing stories that we just don't know a lot of what's going on. First, it came out with uh, a ex Twitch employee claiming they knew exactly why Dr. Disrespect was banned from the platform. And over the last year, they've been using that idea to sell tickets to a show that they were promoting. Now we have Dr. Disrespect coming out with his own statement on the matter. The Twitch ban. Hello, I'd like to make a quick statement. Now, I have to say this has been edited a couple times. The original version, he does talk about how there was a conversation with a minor that he, yes, texted possibly, or message potentially inappropriate at times. But this is the current statement that is on Twitter. Let's cut the effing bullshit. As you know, there's no filter with me. I've always been upfront and real with you guys on anything I can be upfront and I'm always willing to accept responsibility, which is why I'm here now. First and foremost, I do want to apologize to everyone in my community, as well as those close to me, my team and everyone at Midnight Society Game Studio, which has now parted ways with him uh, and seeing that this is a studio he cre helped create. A lot of people have been left in the dark about what happened yesterday with Midnight Society and I. We made a painful decision collectively and have stepped have me step down. Our team is full of incredible talented and good people with that have high career ambitions and families. I never want to jeopardize the culture we have carefully crafted. Everyone has been wanting to know why I was banned from Twitch, but the reasons outside of my control, I was not allowed to say anything for the last several years. Now that two former Twitch employees have publicly disclosed, disclosed the accusations, I can now tell you my side of the story regardless of the ban. Well, there were Twitch whisper messages with an individual back in 2017. The answer is yes. Were there real intentions behind these messages? The answer is absolutely not. There were casual mutual conversations, but sometimes lean too much in the direction of being inappropriate, but nothing more. Nothing illegal happened. No pictures were shared. No crimes were committed. I never even met the individual. I went through lengthy arbitration regarding the civil dispute with Twitch, and that case was resolved by a settlement. Let me be clear, this was not a criminal case against me, and no criminal charges have ever been brought against me. A moral standpoint, I'll absolutely take responsibility. I should not have never entertained these conversations to begin with. That's on me. That's on me as an adult, a husband, and a father. It should never happen. I get it. I'm not perfect. I'll effing own my crap. This was stupid. Now, with all that said, don't get it effing mistaken. I've been all remarks and all labels thrown around loosely. Social media is a destructive zone. I'm no effing predator or pedophile. Are you kidding me? Anyone that truly knows me knows where I stand on those things and with those types of people. F that. There's a different level of disgust that I effing hate hearing about. Don't label me as the worst of the worst with your exaggerations and get the F out of here with that crap. But I think I've said what I needed to say regardless of the ban itself, That that's it. That's why Twitch made the decision in 2020, three years after this uh, alleged conversation happened. To my team, community, industry friends that have supported me, I apologize. I wish I could have said all of this sooner. You guys have always showed me and my family love and support throughout these years. We love you guys like you can't imagine. I have effing the best community and circle. If any of this has made you feel uncomfortable, I get it. You don't have to support me anymore because I know you have always been greatly appreciated. But trust me when I say this to my haters that live and breathe social media with zero real life experiences, I don't give an F about you. Finally, if you're uncomfortable with this statement, think I'm a piece of crap, that's fine. I'm not effing going anywhere. I'm not the same guy that made the mistakes all those years ago. I'm taking a extended vacation with my family, as mentioned, on stream. I'm coming back with the heavy weight off my shoulders. They want me to disappear. Yeah, effing right. What I get out of this is, yes, a conversation happened with the miner. What isn't in all of this is 
did he know he was a they were a minor did he know before or after the fact that that they were a minor did he know before or after twitch brought the messages forward during the ban situation on twitch which I believe started with the conversation about Mixer. I am going to Mixer. Other content creators left Twitch for Mixer and that in particular. So there's a lot of questions here and this brings up a lot more questions. And I honestly, with knowing, uh, with the December 14th, 2017, approximately then, he came onto a very short live stream, Dr. Disrespect, and without his gear, without his makeup, without the attitude or the character that he plays, and very, very tearfully uh, admitted cheating on his wife, uh, going through the motions, saying he was unfaithful to his wife. This was back in 2017 as well. Now, this is where conjecture uh, really does come in. Everyone is talking about how he is, and they're trying to label him as a pedophile in this situation. And I don't know, uh, it, it, was this a 17 year old? There's another document going around or another screenshot of an email that's going around with some more context. Let's take a look at that first. There were whispers between Guy and a 17 year old on Twitch. The age was not known at the time. These were messages in relation to how a, to scale new channels using tied and trusted methods. Behind the scenes, this is a service that was offered by members of Dr. Disrespect's team under a different brand name. The brand name could be interpreted in many ways. The transcripts were part of the court proceedings as and as outlined, show no wrongdoing or illegally. The issue on Twitch side ha was how some of these messages and brand name used could be interpreted differently and was interpreted differently by certain members of the Twitch team that had taken a dislike to Dr. Disrespect due to the bathroom incident. The internal feeling was that it would only be a matter of time before they got him on something. This one, however, was way wide of the mark and wasn't what they thought it was. So I believe the bathroom incident, I, I thought this blew over where Dr. Disrespect uh, started live, you know, was doing a live stream and walked into a bathroom, I believe. Um, and it was like an instant uh, uh, temporary ban. Uh, this became a result of a lot of back and forth at Twitch with various people in the let him, let's get him camp and others, we can't move forward with this camp. Uh, his whispers were being monitored because a core group of influential people within Twitch wanted him gone. The whispers in question were actually from many, many weeks prior to his last stream. The initial explanation provided to him during the termination communication was inappropriate behavior, not befitting of a Twitch brand. He's right in what he said at the time of his go live on YouTube. We, we still don't know because for a long time, Twitch could not commit to an explanation over and above the inappropriate behavior, not be um, befitting of a Twitch brand until the matter went to court. The matter went to court and was found in discovery that not only did a group of Twitch employees conspire to get him, they, but they also broke data protection, uh, protection, internal policy, and CCPA regulations by disclosing a third party who had a contract with what they perceived to have happened. Internally, the argument on their side became, why else would he be messaging someone that young, implying only a sinister perspective for the avoidance of doubt. There was no sexting that implied by a former Twitch employee. These were messages, but not of that nature. Dr. Disrespect was the one who initiated legal proceedings and settled because of the fact that once something like this is said about someone it cannot be unsaid and that would always be some perhaps not fans who would say there was no smoke without fire we uh, have seen many people accused of things that turned out to be true in the past but by that time the damage was done he agreed to no party admits any wrongdoing joint statement purely because he understandably wanted all of this kept quiet the fact that former twitch staff member has now made this this tweet has changed things considerably it's 
out there now and cannot be walked back. Dr. Disrespect is furious that he cannot respond to this properly because his lawyers are telling him that it'll make the agreement invalid and maybe forced to pay back the settlement that he won. I'll say that again, that he won. You end up signing away certain rights and certain agreements during a settlement, especially one that's this large. So you're, you're, you're tied. You're not allowed to say everything publicly that you want to say publicly in these things. Now, I think the statement Dr. Disrespect put out there does more harm than good ultimately, but I think there's a lot more in that statement also showing the future of what's going to happen here. He's going to walk forward with this. Now his mind is open and free and he doesn't have to worry about this heavy burden sitting over his head. There will be legal avenues explored on this one and it will likely ultimately manifest itself in a huge damages claim against Twitch for this coming out. It is clear the industry that there is absolutely raging uh, when he reappeared on YouTube and came back bigger than ever. When he publicly backed Nick Maris recently, the same group of current ex-employees uh, tried to identify if their compromise separation agreements from Twitch would have nullified if they spoke out and only one had the guts after testing the waters numerous times before the sell to sell concert tickets. This person would have largely been fine legally if they had not mentioned the word sexing because it was all about damaging Dr. Disrespect's reputation, but because they use that word, expect legal proceedings to get on their way quickly because the transcripts will absolutely categorically show that there is no sexting, but merely communication with someone who turns out to be a minor that was not known at the time that certain people within Twitch had an agenda against Dr. Disrespect, pounced and made it fit their agenda with zero proof. The rest of that statement all is just housekeeping stuff talking about how Midnight Society is getting cold feet. I don't know if there's actually legitimacy behind this, but I tend to lean towards that, that there was nothing nefarious actually going on between the, and Dr. Disrespect and whoever this minor happened to be. And But at the same time, I do believe Dr. Disrespect probably had some spicy conversations with pe many different people in the, those dark years of 2017 when he cheated on his wife. I think there's a lot of nefarious stuff going on behind the scenes that we just don't know there's no context until more context is out there we don't know what the actual situation is is dr disrespect a pedophile find that hard to believe at this point does he try to be his best when he's in character you gotta remember this is a character he plays online should dr disrespect be investigated that's up to the police let the police handle that type of thing and let the courts go forward. And if through that investigation, they investigate Twitch at the same time, considering you got streamers on Twitch giving it all away pretty much, uh, and then you have links to OnlyFans and, and many more disparaging things online where kids can easily see that online. People are getting death threats over this stuff because they're asking for more proof. It's absolutely despicable that it's gone this point. Dis that now you can't even ask for proof. Dr. Disrespect said, yes, he spoke with the minor. It may have gotten inappropriate at times. Whatever was going on with his family at that time. I think he was, uh, he was looking for more things out there on the market. And then in December, he decided to walk it all back when he realized the mistakes he was making in his life and turning his back on his family. I think it's a very disparaging thing to see. Um, I'm not a huge Dr. Disrespect fan, but this whole situation leads me to believe that just does not have the context behind it. And if we want to get all the context, I guess the Twitch may have to redact and release these DMs because we all know now Twitch has uh, up in their in their little tower they have people that monitor DMs and if this is the case then Twitch is con is complacent here at not reporting very nefarious things that are going on behind the scenes. If Dr. Disrespect was having a relationship with a 17-year-old or a minor at this case, 
then Twitch needs to go to the authorities and say, hey, listen, this is what happened. But they didn't do that. Where does that leave us? D Show the proof. Bring it out. It Put it out all on, on the table at this point. I know there's probably NDAs and there's everything else in the, in the process, but you can you still have to report these types of things to the police if something is going on like that. Anyway, I'm your Project King, Phoenix Center Shadow. I'm signing off here. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have yourselves a great day.